Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, uh, we're talking about the Cleveland Browns 2019 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. And if you are new to the show, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. And with all that stuff out of the way, let's get to the picks in the draft. So uh, first off, uh, you have Greedy Williams, cornerback out of LSU. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 70.41 solo tackle score and an 80.12 pass deflection score. Pretty much hits above the all-pro such pro threshold in terms of both those areas. And when you look at the averages at the position, uh, he's at least near the average for a Pro Bowl player in terms of his solo tackle data. And he's also above what the averages are in terms of uh, all pro and Pro Bowl in terms of his pass deflection data. Uh, based on athleticism traits, Williams had uh, below average explosion, but above average speed for his size. And he didn't do any flexibility testing. Um, he did not have an elite speed score for his size, again, for his size. He definitely is someone who is very, very fast, but because he doesn't really have great explosiveness uh, and also didn't really do any flexibility testing, it does put his athleticism traits into uh, concern. Basically, uh, Grady Williams tested more closely to like a Trey Waynes uh, or uh, yeah, pretty much Trey Waynes, if you will, uh, in terms of his like athleticism traits. So. I'm not saying he's going to be Trey Waynes. I think Greedy Williams has a chance to be better than Trey Waynes. But I think that bottom line is you're mainly going to get a starter. But I think if he becomes a special, special player at the position, it would be very surprising. I think it's more likely he becomes a starter because of that lack of overall elite athleticism traits in terms of explosion and didn't do any flexibility testing to really determine if he has great ex uh, flexibility or not. Then, of course, we get to Sion Takitaki. Uh, uh, linebacker out of BYU when you look at his production date he had a 93.08 solo tackle score pretty much hits above the all-pro threshold Pro Bowl threshold and starter threshold you look at the averages of the position uh, he's uh, you know he, he's kind of between the all-pro average and the Pro Bowl average in terms of his production data and when you look at athleticism data pretty decent as well uh, you know 80 percentile in terms of explosion 79.51 in terms of speed and 67.71 in terms of flexibility for his size uh, when you look at his overall athleticism traits, he pretty much looks like a Pro Bowl type when you look at the overall thresholds at the position uh, versus an All-Pro type. And when you look at the averages, the only area that he's kind of below average is in terms of explosion traits. But bottom line when it comes to him is he definitely has a great all-around profile. He looks like someone who can become a starting uh, linebacker or better. You know, definitely a guy who has Pro Bowl potential based on his overall athleticism traits. So I think this was a genuinely good pick. Uh, the only sort of question marks, of course, is age because, you know, BYU players are usually older. Uh, so that's the only other sort of thing to kind of bring up data-wise that might kind of hinder him a bit. And, of course, uh, we get to Seldrick Redwine, uh, safety out of uh, Miami. When you look at his production data, 36.72 in terms of his solo tackle data, 61.70 uh, in terms of his uh, interception data, and 65.08 in terms of pass deflection data. Doesn't quite hit the all-pro thresholds at the position or the Pro Bowl thresholds at the position. Um, and when you look at the starter averages, the main area that he's lacking is solo tackle data in terms of starter averages at the position. So uh, good interception data, good pass deflection data, but just isn't quite hitting the, the averages that he needs to hit in terms of his solo tackle data. And based on athleticism, 77.32 in terms of explosion, 78.25 in terms of speed, and 67.50 in terms of flexibility testing. Again, over here, it doesn't quite hit all the all-pro areas he needs to hit in terms of his athleticism, nor the Pro Bowl areas he needs to hit specifically in terms of flexibility testing, uh, but definitely has starter potential. And I think that's how you should... <coughs> excuse me. That's how you should view red wine. Uh, someone that has starter potential, but just to be honest with you, the solo tackle data is concerning, and, you know, he doesn't have elite athleticism. He has very good athleticism, but not elite athleticism. So this is definitely one of those picks that could go either way with him. You know, is that he doesn't really have one elite trait, whether he doesn't have a, a, an elite production trait or an elite athleticism trait. And most of the times those guys are like coin flips, honestly. If not even worse than coin flips, if you will. Um, so it's basically like betting on the roulette. Or not roulette, even. Like uh, like basically playing craps and and 
and uh, and you know bet on like a ten percent chance, you know, type of thing. So that's the only sort of issue with Red Wine is uh, his uh, he just doesn't have anything that's elite about him on paper. Then of course we get to Mac Wilson, linebacker out of Alabama. Uh, based on his production data, 36.85 in terms of solo tackle data, it doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, pro bowl threshold. It does hit at least above the starter threshold, but when you look at the averages at the position, woefully below what the all-pro average, pro bowl average, and starter average is for a starting linebacker. And when you get to athleticism data, 50.48 in terms of explosiveness, 70.53 in terms of speed, and 49.82 in terms of flexibility testing. It doesn't hit the all-pro thresholds or pro bowl thresholds, but it does hit at least above the starter thresholds of the position. But when you look at the averages, his uh, explosion testing and flexibility testing is well below what the averages are for all pro player, a pro bowl player, and a starter player at the position. So he's definitely someone that I think has potential to be a starter, but uh, his production data is, is very worrisome combined with his athleticism, which isn't that great either. So again, this is another one of those, he's just not hitting, he's not, just not checking all the boxes that you want to hit in terms of being very confident in him becoming successful long term. Uh, and then, of course, we get to the kicker. Uh, the Browns drafted a kicker, and uh, I, as uh, you know, as I've said before, I don't really have a lot of like special data in terms of evaluating kickers. Uh, for the most part, um, there really hasn't been any like one sort of data point to look at. You know, Austin Seabert is a kicker, but uh, I, I just there's not really much else to say. But they drafted a kicker, uh, and then of course we get to Drew Forbes. Uh, in terms of his uh, athleticism data, uh, he had a uh, 83.17 explosion score, 96.63 speed score, and 87.42 flexibility score. It doesn't hit the uh, does hit above the All Pro threshold and Pro Bowl threshold at the position, so those are all great marks. And when you look at the averages at the position, he's uh, pretty much hits all the sort of averages in terms of All Pro potential, with the exception of his flexibility testing is not above average but it's really really close you know 87.72 is the average and he's 87.42 so essentially Drew Forbes has all pro athleticism traits for the guard position uh, which is good you know that this is one of those picks that I think is probably one of the better picks uh, based on data that the Browns have made so far uh, because he does hit all the sort of marks you're looking for in terms of an elite guard prospect and then the last pick of the draft course is Donnie Lewis cornerback out of Tulane 73.33 in terms of solo tackle data 84.64 in terms of his pass deflection data uh, hits at least above the he hits all the sort of all pro slash pro bowl areas in terms of his uh, in terms of the thresholds of the position and when you look at the averages he's pretty much hits above the the pro bowl average and the all pro slash pro bowl average when it comes to pass deflection data at the position so overall when I look at the Browns draft class, it's okay. You know, uh, I, I've praised the, the Browns draft classes in the past. Uh, you can go to the 2017 class that I reviewed, the 2018 class that I reviewed, and um, I, I've been pretty okay. I've really liked their draft classes. This year, it's maybe because they didn't have a first round pick, because I do remember in 2018. It was kind of top heavy. the The first picks they were taking were, were were really good, and then after that, it kind of tailed off when it got to the day three, uh, which is basically what this draft class did to a certain extent. But um, I think it's a okay class. I think there's guys like Taki Taki. I think is going to be someone who can become a really good long term starting linebacker. Uh, probably probably one of the guys who has a better chance to be like a high quality linebacker. Uh, you look at uh, Greedy Williams, uh, someone I think has a good chance to be a starting cornerback. Of course, Drew Forbes has uh, you know good all-around data. Donnie Lewis, I mean, there isn't much athleticism testing on him, but you know he's someone who had, definitely has good production data. So I think there's some gems in here. There really are, but there, there's no one player that I feel really confident about becoming an elite player in this particular draft class. So there's been other draft classes where I felt a little bit more confident, like okay, yeah, this guy's going to be a high-quality player for the for the team. This year, I don't really see that guy. Mainly because Drew Forbes was a late round pick, you know, late round offensive lineman, late round anybody. Usually they have a tough, tough chance to get onto, you know, becoming a starter on the team. So that's just my general thoughts. I think it's a, it's a, it's an okay class. 
but I'm not overly excited because there was just a lot of like, it was just mixed bag in terms of just overall data uh, results. And of course, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification bell in case you want to be reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.